can we please get your name and title? Yes, my name is Maurice Green. I go by Mo, and I'm a candidate for the position of North Carolina Superintendent of Public Instruction. And you are, of course, the Democratic candidate. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I realize you had appeared on CNN, I think it was last night, talking about some comments that were made by your uh, your um, your rival, uh, Michelle Morrow, the, the Republican candidate for this. What was your reaction when you heard about some of the videos, and especially the one that has been you know, most recently in the headlines? What was your reaction to that? So my reaction was, um, first of all, that I thought it was deeply disturbing. I thought it was uh, incredibly dangerous as well. Yeah, so I, I think about it in the context of what we're trying to do in running our public schools and wanting to be sure that they, we have safe and secure learning environments and to think that we could have someone who you know, said what she said on that video in charge of our safety and security of our uh, 1.3 million public school students was deeply disturbing to me. Um, yeah, I also you know, certainly think about the fact that uh, whoever is elected uh, is going to have to swear to an oath to uphold the Constitution. And it caused me to question whether um, you know, she could actually be trusted to uphold the Constitution when she says in the video to put it aside and essentially put in a military coup. Yeah, absolutely. And um, <clears throat> to be fair, I mean, in that video, she did um, basically denounce the people who committed violence that day. Um, you know, and said that they should have been arrested, the people at the at the January sixth protest. But you still feel like there's there's concerns there in terms of how seriously she would take safety at the schools. Oh, well, no question about it. I mean, so we've got to think about this as part of a pattern. Uh, if you think about some of the other things that she's also said, for example, calling for the executions of many, including President Biden, including President Barack Obama, and actually said that he, uh, she would like to see him executed on publicly, on pay-for-view, uh, our own governor, Governor Cooper, and many, many others. And so when you put it in that context, uh, when you put it in the context that she actually took her own children to this uh, insurrection. Uh, if you put it in the context of all of the folks who, I mean, there were folks who lost their lives there, to then come back and put yourself on video and talk about, now we're going to talk about putting aside the Constitution um, and we're going to install the military and we're going to arrest many for treason, absolutely deeply concerning and incredibly dangerous. Sure. I um, mean, I did also want to address another comment that has surfaced recently. Um, she was apparently recorded without her knowledge in Milwaukee um, during the Republican National Convention uh, by a, a Democratic operative who was posing as a conservative um, and was asking her about um, Bible studies in schools. And she said that she would approve or she would approve of or want to see Bible studies in public schools as an elective. Now, I mean, he was egging her on, to be fair. but. What do you make of that? So, um, you know, I've seen just this morning a clip of it, and uh, so I, I don't know that I've seen all of it, first of all. Uh, but the part that I saw, uh, she did say elective uh, Bible study in mm -hmm. schools, and so those already exist in many, many of our schools, um, and so. You know, that is something certainly that local districts can make a decision about um, as to whether they want to, to do that. Um, the thing that I think we need to be thinking about, though, is let's be sure that we think about what are the significant issues impacting our schools uh, today. And I would lift up uh, things like uh, the woeful underfunding of our public schools in general. I would also lift up uh, how much we are disrespecting our educators and not paying them what they uh, deeply deserve. Uh, that we need to be focused on being sure that we provide differentiated uh, uh, resources such that each child can get what uh, they need to be successful uh, when they leave high school. So, yeah, along with what we've already discussed, safe and secure learning environments, those are the things that we need to focus on. Um, and so this issue 
certainly folks should have the freedom to um, you know, believe in their faith and uh, read about it and certainly in an elective uh, you know, course. Um, you know, districts are already allowing that to happen. I know that happened. Um, one more question I wanted to ask about, um, where do you, I guess, what do you see as the biggest difference between yourself and Michelle Morrow as a candidate for this office? So, um, if I might just say that the, I think about maybe three things. Sure. Um, and so the first would be experience. Um, and so I have, um, I've been blessed to have a lot of experience actually um, leading uh, schools and participating in our public schools. You know, so having served as the superintendent of Guilford County Schools uh, for seven plus years, uh, and in addition to that having been the deputy superintendent and general counsel for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools for seven plus years, uh, deep, deep experience in uh, running and leading our schools compared to my opponent who homeschools her children and I want to be abundantly clear, I don't have anything against homeschooling, but you're talking about the chief administrative officer for public schools. This is the person who will be over uh, 2,500 schools, 1.3 million students, a budget of uh, $11 billion annually that is administered through that department. So that's the first thing. The second would be belief in our public schools. Um, yeah, I certainly believe in our public schools and uh, that they are the entity that can transform uh, students, their families, communities, the state and beyond. Uh, and I go further and say as a personal matter, my wife and I were blessed to have two wonderful children. We were also blessed to be in a situation where we could choose where to send our children. We chose them to send them to our public schools and they both graduated from our public schools. And six years ago, when our youngest graduated from uh, high school, I wrote a letter to uh, the educators in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools where they started and Guilford County schools where they ended, thanking them for the marvelous job that they had done in educating our students, our children. Mm -hmm. That is something that uh, has been published, so you can see it uh, for yourself. Uh, my opponent has called our public schools all sorts of things, including indoctrination centers and cesspools of evil and lies and deception and um, socialist centers, uh, call our educators all sorts of things, including groomers, and the list is long. Yeah. And encouraging parents not to even send their children to our public schools. And so this position, in addition to being the chief administrative officer, I would contend is also the chief advocacy officer for our public schools. And so I believe that uh, if you want to run our schools, um, if you want to advocate for our schools, you ought to believe in our schools. That's number two. And then number three would be character, character. And here what I'm really talking about is, for me, um, what we did in Guilford County Schools, where we made character equally as important as academic outcomes to the point that character, uh, the district was recognized as a national district of character. We helped our students understand how to comport themselves, how to be in relationship with each other, uh, even when they're in disagreement with each other, and also um, how to be of service to their community. I've got an opponent who is, as we already have discussed, uh, called for things like the executions of uh, many elected officials and others, um, has um, certainly shown herself uh, as someone who um, would call for setting aside the Constitution of the United States of America, who would call for a military coup and would want to have arrests of many for treason if they helped certify an election. And so those would be the three things that I would say set us apart, experience, belief, and character. All right, great. I think that's about all the time I have. Um, I say thank you very much. I'm talking to Mo Green, WRL. Thank you.